You know, Skyward Sword is going to be a hard game to review. Why? Well, there are so many arguments and mixed opinions about this game that you could fill a book with it all. So dare I delve down this dark path that's going to result with either the fans or the haters of this game putting a price on my head? Heck yeah! Time to make some people angry! Our story begins on an island in the sky known as Skyloft, where our hero Link spends his days flying through the air, battling his rival, and trying to survive his best friend Zelda's multiple attempts to murder him. One day, during what was essentially a date between Link and Zelda, a brown tornado appears and sucks Zelda down below the clouds, prompting Link to descend to... the surface, to look for her. Skyward Sword is often criticized for the element it's most known for, motion controls. Instead of using buttons to attack, you'll swing the Wiimote like a sword and use the nunchuck as a shield. This system has Link mimicking whatever motion you make with a Wiimote and nunchuck, forcing you to use more precision and strategy when battling enemies and bosses. So no flailing around like a maniac. I learned the hard way. Of course, the motion controls aren't just limited to your sword and your shield. Link's items also make good use of them, with slingshots, bombs, and a flying beetle which you steer by tilting the Wiimote. Now at this point, you might be asking, what's all the fuss about the motion controls? Well, that's hard to say. Some people find them to be spot on, while others think they don't work at all. I'm at the in-between point when it comes to this argument. The motion controls, for me at least, worked pretty well, but they did have their issues. However, I remember playing a demo of this game at Walmart some time ago, and the motion controls worked perfectly, which only caused confusion in my rather small brain. So with all the mixed opinions, what's the verdict? Well, I think it really depends on the player, and how well you calibrate the Wiimote to your TV screen when you start up the game. But seeing as the motion controls were about 85% accurate for me, I'd say they work just fine, yet aren't perfect. The dungeons in this game are pretty good. They aren't too difficult to get through, but you will need to use your head if you want to make it to the end. The boss fights, however, are where the dungeons truly shine. The need to angle your sword properly and use your items to your advantage make them challenging and so much fun. Most of the game will take place on the surface, but you'll be going back to Skyloft quite frequently to restock on supplies and continue the story. Of course, Skyloft isn't the only area in the sky you can go to. You can soar through the clouds on top of a huge bird called a Loftwing and explore the smaller islands waiting to be discovered. That being said, most of them are vacant and otherwise uninteresting. In fact, out of all the floating islands I visited, only one of them really felt worth the trip, and that was partially because I got to vandalize a chandelier. Hey, you guys aren't mad about this, are you? I thought you might say that. Unlike past entries in the franchise, Link's shield has durability. If you don't block enemy attacks properly, your shield will take damage and eventually break. There's a man in Skyloft who can repair your shield for the right price, but you can take it a step further and have him upgrade it by using materials dropped by monsters or found on the surface. But it doesn't end there. You can upgrade some of your other equipment too, like the beetle or the slingshot. I loved being able to do this, and I hope the upcoming Zelda game for the Wii U includes this upgrade system. Most of your many side quests will take place in Skyloft, where you'll help people out with their stupid and irrelevant problems. Like this one guy who asked me to deliver a love letter to his crush. Yeah, sure, I could do that for you, buddy. But a creepy hand living in the toilet says she needs toilet paper, so... Sorry. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd understand. I have to stop here and mention one of the villains in this game. Girahim. Gyra... Gerb... Dang it, I'm calling him Phil. Okay, so Phil is my all-time favorite villain in the Zelda franchise. He's creepy, powerful, confident, and he shows up constantly to harass Link. I felt pretty intimidated by him, which is something most video game villains don't do for me nowadays. His threatening and sometimes insane personality made it all the more satisfying whenever I managed to take him off. Overall, I really liked Skyward Sword. It gets a lot of love from some people and a lot of hate from others, but I think it's, despite its flaws, a great game. If you haven't played a Zelda game before and are wanting to get into the franchise, this game wouldn't be a bad place to start. So without further ado, I give The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword an 8.5 out of 10.